Hello guys, good afternoon. You are welcome to my YouTube channel, the Explicit Tutorials. As you all know, I'm Dr. Joseph or Mr. Explicit. Please, as you watch this video, endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment. In our previous class, we did discuss the cell. We did the part one of the topic cell. In today's video, we shall be looking at the organelles of the cell or the organelles that make up the cell. Alright? So, in our previous class, we discussed the origin of the cell and the first living on the first living thing on earth. So, what are the organelles of the cells? Number one, we have nucleus. Nucleus is one of the organelles that make up the cell. And as, as I initially told you guys that the nucleus was first described by Robert Brown. By Robert Brown in year 1883. Alright, the nucleus was first described by Robert Brown in year 1883. And the organelles is known as the largest organelle of the cell. So what is the function of the cell? The function of the cell is that it houses it houses hereditary materials. Alright? It stores hereditary materials. It means that the DNA, the RNA, the genes, and chromosomes are all found in the nucleus. Alright? It houses or stores hereditary or genetic materials. It therefore means that the DNA, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, R stands for ribonucleic acid, genes and chromosomes are all found inside the nucleus. In our previous class, I told you guys that the prokaryotes, they lack a well-defined nucleus. Then you say it is a nucleoid, a nucleoid. So the genetic materials of a prokaryote is found in the nucleoid and not the nucleus because they lack a well-defined nucleus. I believe that is understood. Number two, we take cell wall. This cell wall is found only in plants. Animals do not have cell wall. Animals do not have cell wall. Animals have only cell membrane. Now, this cell wall, this cell wall provides protection it provides protection as well as what? Support. It provides protection. It provides support. It is also responsible for the shape of the plant cell. Okay? Now, the cell wall is made up of three entities. The cell wall has the pectin. The cell wall has the cellulose. And the cell wall has the hemine cellulose. Alright? So these are the three components of the cell wall. The cell wall has the pectin, the cell wall has the cellulose, the cell wall has the hemine cellulose. So these are the three components of the cell wall. I said cell wall is found only in plants. Animals do not have cell wall. I believe it is un it's understood. Number three, we take ribosome. Ribosomes are small or minute bodies. Ribosomes are small or minute bodies suspended on the cytoplasm of the cell. And the primary uh, function of the ribosomes is that they are responsible for protein synthesis. Alright, this synthesis means to manufacture, to form, to produce. So the ribosomes are concerned with protein uh, synthesis or protein manufacturing as the case may be. Please, you should note that number four is the nucleus. The nucleus produces the ribosome. Yeah. The nucleus produces the ribosome. So if the nucleus produces the ribosome, it means that the nucleus is also needed for protein what? Synthesis. And how would you describe the nucleus? The nucleus is a dark, dense region of the nucleus. The nucleus is a dark, dense region of the nucleus 
that produces ribosomes for protein synthesis. It doesn't stop there. The nucleus is also needed for cellular respiration. It also aids cellular respiration, okay? So please take note of that. Number five. Number five. Let us take um, centrio. Centrio. This one is very short. Centrio is the region of cell division in animals. Hope that is clear. Centrio is the region of cell division in, in animals. But meristem, meristem is the region of cell division in plants. So meristem is to plants. The centrio is to animal. Please note that a pair of centrio is called centrosome. Alright? A pair, a pair, a pair of centrio is called centrosome. A pair of centrio is called centrosome. Centrio, that is where cell division occurs in animals. A plant, it occurs in a meristem. Let me drop this. The meristem is made up of cells that can undergo actively cell division. That is, they can divide through mitosis. It means that the cells that make up the tissue of the meristem can undergo a continuous mitotic division, okay? So we have three types of meristems. There is three types of meristems. We have one, the apical meristem, Two, the intercalary meristem. And three, the lateral meristem. Epical meristem, intercalary meristem, and lateral meristem. So these are the three types of meristems that we have. Now this first word called epical, the word apex. It means these meristems are found in the tips. In the tips of roots, shoots, and leaves, as well as stems. Alright? The word apical means apex, tip. So this apical meristem is found in the tips of roots, shoots, leaves, and stems. So if they are found in the tips of this uh, part of plants, it means they are, they are needed for the vertical growth of plants. Alright, so apical meristem brings about the vertical growth of what? Plants. That is, it triggers the vertical growth of roots, shoots, leaves, and what? Stems. Let me bring this. We have five important hormones in plants. But the most important of these five hormones are the auxins. The auxins are known as the most important plant hormones. In fact, they are the first plant hormones discovered. So the auxins and apical meristem work in work hand in hand, alright? So the auxins work hand in hand with apical meristem, which triggers the vertical growth of plants. Hope that is understood. The next one is intercalary. As the word implies, inter, inter means between. So, intercalary meristem is a type of meristem found in the nodes of plants. The nodes of plants. I believe you have seen the bamboo stem before. Bamboo stem. The one we call bamboo stick. Like bamboo. Like bamboo stem. You know bamboo stem has a strong region. That strong region where the branches emanate is called the node. Why that empty part inside the bamboo stem that is hollow? That is hollow means empty. It is called the internode. Internode. So the hollow part of the bamboo stem is called internode. Why that strong part where branches grow from is called nodes. Now, if this meristem is found in the nodes of plants, it therefore means that this meristem triggers the growth of what? Branches. That is what it means. The last one is what? The lateral meristem. Lateral meristem enhances the lateral, it triggers the lateral growth of plants. Please note, note that the cambium, the cambium, 
cambium. Now the cambium is one of the various uh, constituents of vascular bundles. You know, xylem, phloem, and cambium are the three entities that make up the vascular bundles. So the cambium is found in the lateral meristem. What does it do? It triggers secondary growth. The part of the plant, to be specific, dicot plant, monocot plants lack cambium, and that is why they don't undergo secondary growth. But dicot plants have cambium, and they undergo secondary growth. What is the meaning of secondary growth? Secondary growth is a type of growth characterized by the increase in diameter of the roots of plants. If the root, if the diameter of roots increases in size, you call that what? Secondary growth. What triggers it? The cambium. So monocot lack cambium, hence they do not undergo secondary growth. Dicot have cambium, then they undergo secondary growth. Hope that is clear. Let's look at another uh, form of organelle. Let us look at the number seven now. Let us look at the lysosome. The lysosome. Now please, please and please, just note that the lysosome is also called the suicide bag of the cell. The act of killing oneself is called suicide. The fact that it's called suicide bag does not mean that it's a bag that kills itself. No, it does not kill itself. It is called suicide bag because it eliminates. It is called suicide bag because it eliminates useless materials from the body. All right. Please, uh, you know that the spermatozoa or the sperm, the spermatozoa has the head, neck. And tail, the sperm of a, I know the sperm is known as the sex cell or the gamete. Alright, know the sperm is known as the sex cell or the gamete. The sperm has the head, the neck, and the tail. These are the three uh, segments of the sperm. Now the head, now the head has the nucleus. And the acrosome. Alright? The head of the sperm has the nucleus and the acrosome. And the acrosome now contains a lysosome or a lactic enzyme. What is the function of this lactic enzyme? You know, during fertilization, the male sperm fertilizes the, the female egg. Once the sperm fertilizes the female egg, zygote is formed. And you and I know that zygote is a diploid entity. Alright, so the function of the lactic enzyme is to help the sperm to dissolve the, 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 the membrane that surrounds the egg of the female organism. You know the membrane that surrounds the outer membrane that surrounds the egg of the female organism is called the vitella membrane. That's why a man that always releases watery sperm cannot impregnate a woman. Why? Because the vitella membrane requires millions of sperms, all right, in order for it to be rendered weak or vulnerable. If the vitella membrane of the egg is not overcome, a woman can never be impregnated. That's why in order for a woman to be impregnated, millions of sperms must be produced in order to dissolve this vitella membrane that surrounds the egg. So the work of lactic enzyme is to help the sperm to dissolve the vitella membrane in order to bring about what? fertilization. You know that fertilization occurs in the fallopian tube of the woman. Fallopian tube is the region where fertilization occurs. It is very easy. All you need to do is just be doing incessant reading. All these things are pieces of cakes. They are very easy. So, just know that lysosome is also known as what? Well, the suicide bag. Mm -hmm. 
It is called side bar because it helps in eliminating useless waste from the body of the organism. It also helps in uh, it also helps in getting rid of foreign bodies like viruses, fungi, and what have you. Bacteria. It, that is, it is lactic suicide. It can kill anything in the body that will bring harm. Many foreign uh, entities, all right? It eliminates them. So, note that, note that. The next one is the cell, is the cell membrane. The cell membrane, wow. Please, if, uh, if you are asked to list some organelles that make up the cell, don't forget to list cell membrane. It is very, very important. Now, what are the features of the cell membrane? If I don't call it cell membrane, I can also call it the plasma membrane. Alright? If I don't call it cell membrane, I can also call it the plasma membrane. Or in some cases, it can also be called the plasma lemma. Alright? The cell membrane is also called plasma membrane or plasma lemma. Plasma lemma is another word for the cell membrane. Now, please, the cell membrane is selectively permeable. If I don't say it is selectively permeable, I will say it is semi permeable. Now, why do you think it is semi permeable or selectively permeable? It is semi permeable because it's, it dictates the kind of materials that enter, that enter and leave the cell. It, it decides or it dictates the type of material that leave and enter the cell selectively. It selects. It is not all materials that enter the cell. Some materials that are completely solidified cannot enter the cell through the cell membrane. All right. This, the materials that can enter into the cell are gaseous molecules, liquid molecules, and tiny solid molecules. Do you understand that? That's why they say it is selectively what? Permeable. Which of this membrane is responsible for the transportation of materials in and out of the cell? The answer is what? Cell membrane, all right? Cell membrane transport materials in and out of the cell. Also note that cell membrane, act, it, 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 it acts as a barrier between the organelles of the cell and the external environment. All right, it acts as a barrier. It separates the internal organelles from the external environment. That's why the cell membrane is also called gatekeeper. The cell membrane is also called what? Gatekeeper. The basic unit, please note this, though it was not mentioned in the material, but you should note this, that the basic unit of the plasma membrane, if you give your lecture at this, you will give you a trauma. The basic unit of cell membrane, or the basic unit of the plasma membrane, is the phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer. So the basic unit of the plasma membrane is called phospholipid bilayer. Please, it is very, very important. So please, it's also known as the gatekeeper of the cell. It transports materials in and out of the cell. It also provides protection, right? It provides protection. But there are some organisms that use the cell membrane for respiration or plasma membrane for respiration. Examples are paramecium podatum and amoeba proteus. Amoeba proteus and paramecium podatum use their cell membrane or plasma membrane for respiration because they use their body surface, right? Body surface for respiration. And this guy is found on their body surface. I believe it is clear enough. The next one is chloroplast. Chloroplast. The chloroplast of the cell is a region 
where photosynthesis occurs. The chloroplast of the cell is the region where photosynthesis occurs. Please note, it does not occur in the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is just the pigment, is the green pigment found in the chloroplast, which means that the green color of leaves is as a result of the presence of what? The chlorophyll. Photosynthesis does not occur inside the chlorophyll. It occurs inside the chloroplast. The color of leaves is as a result of the presence of chlorophyll. But the color of flowers, the color of flowers is as a result of the presence of clo of uh, clo that is chloroplast. Chromoplast, yeah. The color of leaves, chloroplast. The color of fruits and flowers, chromoplast. Don't take this for this. I believe it is clear. The next one is what? Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm and nucleus form the protoplasm. I told you guys that the protoplasm is known as what? The living content of the cell. So, cytoplasm plus nucleus. Cytoplasm plus nucleus produces what? Protoplasm. So the components of the protoplasm are the cytoplasm and the nucleus. What is the cytoplasm? The cytoplasm, all right, is a thick, uh, jelly-like. The cytoplasm is a thick, jelly-like structure that suspends every other organelles. All right, all other organelles situated on the inside of the cell are suspended inside the cytoplasm. However, the fluid, the fluid inside the cytoplasm that suspends these organelles is called the cytosol. All right, the fluid inside the cytoplasm that suspends all other organelles found in the cell is called the cytosol. So the cytoplasm, uh, it's, it suspends other organelles. It is the region where most metabolic activities occur. All right, most chemical reactions and metabolic activities occur inside the cytoplasm. I believe it is understood. Now the next one, we are almost running out of the class. The next one is the goggy body. Goggy body. The next one is what? The goggy body. The goggy body of the cell, all right, is responsible for the packaging of food materials. It is responsible for the packaging of food materials. It, it also enhances, it brings about maintenance of the cell. It packages food materials. It also brings about the maintenance of what? The cell. That is a function of what? The goggy bodies. Okay? The next one is the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, on the material, they did not uh, explain this better. That is, they did not segregate it. Now, endoplasmic reticulum is of two types. We have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum. We have smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Your question could be, sir, what is the difference between this and this? In rough, as name implies rough, an endoplasmic reticulum becomes rough when ribosomes are attached to it. So a type of endoplasmic reticulum that has an attached ribosomes is what rough endoplasmic reticulum. What does it do? It transports the proteins already produced. 
is responsible for the transportation of proteins that has been what synthesized. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now your mind should tell, tell you that it is smooth because ribosomes are not attached to it. Therefore, what does it do? It is responsible for the for the transportation. It is responsible for the transportation and synthesis of steroids and lipids. All right. The rough, the arrow E arrow transports already synthesized protein. The smooth transport and synthesizes steroids and what? Lipids. You know lipid is, a, is the collective name for fat and oil. Fat and oil are collectively called lipid. Alright? So, note that. Note that. Um, however, if you are asked to state the, the function of this guy without segregating it, you say endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for the synthesis of protein, transportation of lipids, and what? Steroids. Very easy. Transportation of uh, proteins already synthesized and the synthesis of steroids and what? Lipids. That is how. It, very easy. Very easy. So that is how it is. If you can listen to this video patiently without skipping or without disturbing us, you, you, you know the, the usefulness of this video. So just as you are watching, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Do not enjoy the video all alone. Share it to your friends who are also taking the JUPED program. So as time goes on, I'm going to be covering all the topics in physics, chemistry and biology. Already on, on my YouTube channel, the SP Tutorials, I've covered most of the topics in chemistry. So please, in our next class, we are going to be looking at the importance of the cell. So what, what are the what are the role or what or what are the significance of the importance of the cell? You know the cell can provide support. The cell also brings about reproduction through mitosis and meiosis. Don't worry, in our next class, I'm going to be teaching you the importance or the role of the cell. Please, if you know you have learned something, subscribe, like, share, and comment. Do have a wonderful day.